Today we will show you how to generate a secure random passphrase to keep your accounts safe. Hello everyone, this is Rick with Cybermedics. Passphrases are a series of words not normally associated which can be used for login. A random passphrase is much more secure than traditional passwords. We will detail how to generate a random passphrase for your accounts for more security. Later in the video, we'll illustrate how to test the relative strength of these passphrases. Stick around to the end and we'll show you a cool way to regenerate that long passphrase. The video is broken up into six parts so you can skip around as desired. Before we get started, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that password managers generally have an automatic way to generate unique and long passwords. These password managers make it easy for you to manage these long unique passwords. If you're interested in a password manager similar to Bitwarden, please click on the link above. All right, jumping right into the Electronic Frontier Foundation's website, we're going to start talking about a passphrase dictionary. EFF here mentions that passphrases offer a major security upgrade over passwords, which they do. And we'll demonstrate that in the video. The more words you have, the harder it is to crack. They based their dictionary off the original Diceware list. For a total of 7,776 words. They're a fan of the Diceware list, but they thought it had some challenges when it came to usability. Those concerns are listed here. They believe their list has addressed some of these usability issues and is much easier to remember. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the original Diceware page. We'll expand this so it's easier to read and go over some of the things that they mention on this page. Again, they're emphasizing the fact that passphrases are more secure than passwords. You need one or more six-sided dice. They do not recommend using a computer program, but recommend using physical dice. We're going to use a computer program for demonstration purposes. Down here, they tell you to decide how many words you want in a passphrase. They recommend five for passwords, six if you're encrypting something, seven, eight, or nine if you have high-valued assets. I thought we'd do a brief explanation on how they come up with the number of combinations possible. So what we did is we have five dice, and each one has six sides, so six to the fifth is 7,776. That's how they came up with that number. We're going to use four words for our passphrase. This is the mathematical formula to determine the number of possible combinations from a passphrase. So you put in the original number of words, and then how many words are in your passphrase, in this case four. We calculate that answer, and it's 152 trillion combinations based on using these five dice rolled four times. What we're going to do now is generate these words by rolling these dice. So we'll roll the dice to get the words. So we'll come over to the site and we'll roll the dice. And we have a total of four sites here because we want to generate four words. So I picked four so we would have random choices. Here, roll the dice. Roll the dice, and one last time, roll the dice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab these four numbers just as we rolled them. So this is four, two, three, four, five. And I created a little file here, and we're going to post those numbers in the file. So go back and get the next number, 51124. Go back to our file, 51124. Go back to our next roll here which was five five three six two paste that here go back and get our next number which is three six six two six go back to our file paste it here now what we want to do is get the corresponding words to these numbers so we'll copy the first number we'll go back to the eff dictionary we'll do control f and that word is obsessed so we'll copy the word obsessed go back to our file paste the word here get our next number, and just keep repeating this process. So searching on the next number, it's refried. Highlight that number and paste it. Go and get the next number that we generated. Go back to the dictionary. That word is spectacle, so we'll copy that word. Paste the word spectacle, get the next number. Paste that number, and that word is margarita. Hey, see what we did there, we rolled we rolled the dice four times. You could have rolled physical dice, but we used websites to do that. 
And then those generated four numbers. We took those four numbers and we searched through this dictionary and we, we received our words. So we paste those words here. So now we've got obsessed, refried, spectacle, margarita. Now what we want to do is generate a phrase. The first thing I normally do is just use the abbreviation O-R-S-M. And then I create a little story. In this case, I'm obsessed with the refried spectacle of a margarita. It kind of helps get a visual in your head as to what this passphrase is and an easy way to correlate the memory of the passphrase. So what we're going to do is we're going to tweak it, geek it a little bit, and then finally grade it. So we'll walk through that process. So the first thing I did is I truncated this and just said obsessed refried spectacle of a margarita used a special character, the word refried, the first letter of the word, and then did something you're not supposed to, which is substitute zeros for O's and at for A. Next, we just took all four words together. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to grade each one of these and we'll walk you through that process. The next one, we took the obsessed, the first two words, refried spectacle, and did something else you're not supposed to do, which is just use four special characters across the row of the keyboard. So no randomness to that at all. And then typed in margarita. And then finally, just took and capitalized the first letter of each of the words, obsessed, refried, spectacle, margarita. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little discussion on password meters that we're going to use to grade each of these variations of a passphrase. So the password meters, the first one we're going to explore is this ZXCVBN. And this is an analysis by Dan Wheeler, who works for Dropbox. Did an extremely informative presentation on the USEC security in 2016. Would encourage you to click on it if you're interested in more information. What he did is analyze the way that password meters check for the strength of a password. And he noted that humans use patterns. And these patterns are usually some combination of characters that are easily to guess. And even when they use numbers and symbols, they do things that are not smart from a security standpoint. Use three for E or zero for O. So encouraging numbers and symbols did not significantly increase the security of login credentials. So what he did is developed a method to more accurately determine the security of a passphrase or password that doesn't penalize complex passphrases. So he uses this correct the horse battery staple as an example. So under Dropbox's old method to assess passwords, that passphrase was graded as so-so. Under the new method where they don't overly credit numbers and symbols, it was judged to be great. So again, this is the ZXCVBN method. There's a couple websites that are using this to assess passwords and we'll demonstrate those here in a minute. On to the next one. This is the University of Illinois at Chicago, and they have a detailed analysis method that they use for grading passwords. They have two sections, additions and deductions. So based upon the number of characters, upper characters, middle number or symbols, you can get additions. If you have letters only, you'll get deductions, and we'll demo that here in a minute. Again, that's the University of Illinois at Chicago. Another password grading system that I liked because they detail what they do is this password monster. We'll expand this here so it's easier for you to see. They use common dictionaries and regular dictionaries to downgrade passwords if they use the common words. It also does substitution attacks. So if you're substituting an A with an at symbol or you're substituting E's with threes, it dings the password from a security standpoint. Substitution is done by people, but hackers also know that, so it doesn't really provide additional security. And it also checks for the proximity of characters, so if you're using a sequence of characters next to the keyboard, it will downgrade the security of your password. Next, we'll get into the actual grading of the passphrase passwords that we generated earlier in the video. First thing we're going to do is go into our file and grade each of these passwords on five different sites. So we'll copy this passphrase that we generated, the first example. We'll go back over here to Bitwarden and we'll type it in. And it says it's strong. It'll take centuries to crack. We'll go to the next password meter. And this one, as well as Bitwarden, are using this methodology to grade passwords. I like this site better because it gives more granularity of the security of the password. So we'll type that in. 
And you can see here it's grading based upon the number of attempts per time unit. So there's more granularity into the security of the password. You can also click on this, break it down. It'll give you even more detail if you desire. All right, so on to the University of Illinois at Chicago. We'll paste that password in here and it says it's very strong. We'll scroll down and you can see these are the additions and these are the subtractions because it had letters only. It had some deductions, but because of the number of characters, it had a bonus. Regardless, it's created very strong. Another site that uses the same methodology is this one here. The only thing I don't like is that it's not secure. We'll paste the password, and I like the fact that it gives an overall percentage. The last one is password monster. So we'll paste our password in there, and you can see it says it's 84 million years. So what we're gonna do is now tabulate all of the grades. We're not gonna go through paste each one of these. I'll show you the tabulation of grades on the rest of them. So we'll come over here. This is the one we just completed. And this next one here, you can see that we've got centuries, but now if you go to the 10 billion tries per second, it's down to 12 days. So that's why I kind of like the way that they broke out the security assessment. Very strong, very strong, 19 million years. So it dropped a little bit. This next one with just the four words, no changes, centuries, three months on 10 billion tries per second. These two sites judged it as weak. And now we're down to 2,000 years over here. I'm not really a big fan on the amount of time, but I do like the granularity of the grading so that you can kind of get an idea, is the security increasing or decreasing? So I really look at this from a relative strength perspective on how good the password or passphrase is. All right, on the next one here, we're down to 13 years, seven minutes. These judged them both very strong and now we're down to 108 years. So what I'm looking for is something across the board here that would be completely strong, kind of like this one at the top, right? All right, so now we'll go down to the last one, which is just the capitalization of each of the words and centuries, two years at 10 billion, very strong, very strong, and two million years. So you can see if you just use the passphrase by itself, it doesn't have the strongest score, but I like the idea of just using a passphrase because it's memorable and easy to recall you know, obsessed refried spectacle of a margarita. I mean, you can kind of get that in your head, right? So what I wanted to do was take the standard passphrase that we generated randomly and tweak it a little bit and see if I could come up with a methodology that would make it tremendously strong across the board. So starting off with that, we're gonna make two minor changes to this passphrase and I'm gonna show you the result is phenomenal. So the first thing we're gonna do is address a capitalization, we're going to randomly put a capitalized letter in the passphrase, and we're going to split this and put in a special character. So you can see right here, what we did is we capitalized the E, and we split this word, and it's important that we split it rather than substitute, because if you substitute, now you've just got the same dictionary words that could be cracked with the dictionary, but now that you've substituted something, this is no longer a dictionary word. In addition that you've added a capitalization, now a hacker would have to address capitalization across the whole passphrase. They'd have to address special characters across the whole passphrase. And you'll see the net result of this on the security grading. So we put it up here and put it right underneath the other one. And now you can see we're at centuries, centuries, 10 billion second, very strong, very strong, 300 trillion years years. So that's phenomenal. We took the standard passphrase that was pretty good already and we made two minor tweaks to it. Now if you wanted to visually kind of come up with something that would help you remember how you tweak this a little bit, what I thought of is uh, you know a number 22. That's one two on the second word and the second character. So 22. And then 34 is one two three third word one two three four we put in a special character so that number 2234 you can write it down if you wanted to somewhere no one's going to understand what that is that number could then be used to help you remember what you changed which characters that you actually changed capitalized and inserted a special character so just a thought process for that next what i wanted to do was talk about an easy way to regenerate this passphrase. Now that's a lot to type out, but let's say you don't want to type that whole thing out, but you still want to use that passphrase for secure logins or secure protection of particular assets. 
one of the things you can do is you can use what is called a double blind method. And the double blind method, what you'll do is you'll remember part of it and then you'll be able to recreate it through another mechanism. In this case, what we're going to do is use a hardware security key from Yubico. It has something called a static password function. The static password function allows you to regenerate a static password. So what you do is you just hold the contacts on the side of it. And when you hold the contacts, it will dynamically regenerate a password. So look at that. I mean, you could just remember this part right here, obsessed, refried, and then the rest of it, you just click a button and bang, there it is. And someone would have to know the first part, plus they'd have to have stolen your key. They'd have to know what account you used on. Very unlikely that you're going to be vulnerable using this method. If you're interested in double blind password method, we have a link to a video that we did above. All right, so going over some of the significant things, first thing I would like to emphasize is do not type your personal passwords into the password meters. I only use this for demonstration purposes. I personally do not trust any site with my passwords unless it's where I'm going to go to credential my account. You can use them to grade the methodology, but do not type your real passwords in on password grading sites. Random passphrases are best for account security. If you use physical dice, you'll get a more random pattern than we did using the dice websites. And we demonstrated how just capitalizing one letter and using one special character would increase the security of your passphrase significantly. The thing to keep in mind about all of this is length and randomness is the most important thing when you're generating login credentials. That's a wrap on passphrase security and how to create a secure login credential. Hope you will like and share our content. This supports our efforts in helping others with technology and have a great and wonderful automation day.